Good morning. Let's stand and sing together. Today, we light the candle, the first candle of the Advent wreath. This is the candle of hope. With Christians around the world, we use this light to help us prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we receive God's light as we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 9-2. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Our next reading is from Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I'd like to welcome you to United Covenant Church uh, this morning. All of you here and all of you joining online, we're glad you're with us. Uh, a few announcements we have. Uh, this coming Saturday, December 9th at 9 a.m., uh, here at church, we are having an opportunity to hear from Janelle Johnson and Shannon Cogbill about their experiences in Israel this last fall. They will also be giving some firsthand insights about the things going on in Israel at this time. So this is going to be a breakfast potluck, so please bring a dish to share and come enjoy a morning together. Again, that's Saturday, December 9th at 9 a.m. here at church. And then over the next couple weeks, we have the opportunity to hear from our Sunday school children uh, during our worship service. So one week from today on December 10th, the sixth grade pre-confirmation students will present a skit called A Christmas to Believe in. And the following week, week December 17th, we will be hearing from our younger Sunday school children as they present the Christmas program. So both Sunday skits will be during the 10 o'clock worship service. And again, thank you. Uh, thank you that the dessert theater is over. <laughs> but we are so happy that we got to do that all together. Um, it was a great success this weekend, uh, totally because of all the people who helped, um, those that made desserts, helped in the kitchen, decorated, worked in the sound booth, part of a skit, a greeter, the MCs, anyone in the choir, people helping with setup, costumes, props, tables, chairs, prayer especially, and invited your friends and more and more. We thank you to everyone that helped make a success. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone. It's always great fun. So there are many more announcements and updates uh, in your bulletins. And if you are a visitor or new to United Covenant Church, uh, please visit the connections table out in the foyer and pick up a gift from United Covenant. And you may also place prayer requests and offerings in the wooden box um, back at the back of the sanctuary, kind of below the sound booth over there. Um, if you'd prefer to give online, and you can do that at our website, which you can find in the bulletin. Uh, finally, please sign the attendance pads and pass them towards the center of the sanctuary uh, all the way into the middle section and then please stand and greet your neighbors. <laughs> Oh, 
such a great um, just privilege to be able to celebrate uh, this amazing part of your story of the story that we get to be a part of of you rescuing us from sin with a savior that is so perfect and came to earth as one of us God you in flesh dwelling among us is such an incredible story and so as we go through this advent season this season just preparing for your coming uh, just 
teach us something new. Open our eyes and our ears to learn something that you have to teach us as we just look forward to your coming again, Jesus. And as we just give all these things to you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. blessing it is to come and worship the Lord and and to be able to pray together and um, so as we come together for prayer today we're gonna um, see we're gonna lift up Dirk Prindle's dad who has a um, kind of a staph infection I understand so we'll pray for him and just also want to Again, praise the Lord for the dessert theater. And um, we did have a free will offering. And um, so there is, I think, Susie said $1,100 that was raised for, so half of that will, yeah, praise God for that. So um, so we're going to give 550 to the Christmas for children and then 550 to the Lifeline Food Pantry. So praise God for people's generosity for that. And, um, yeah, so does anybody have something that they're like, man, I just got to praise God today about this thing. Anybody have something like that that they're feeling? I, I do thank God that the Lord um, helped Lucas to make it through. He had the flu, you know, on right before the dessert theater, and we were kind of like, oh, man, you know, how is this going to work? But... Um, I don't even know where Lucas is here now. He's sitting. Oh, hiding in the back. And then he got beat down. And then he got beat down by the choir and everybody. So anyway, we're just thankful that, that he made it through and, and everybody else made it through too. A lot of flu going around, so we're going to pray for that. And anybody have something that they want to lift up in prayer today? All right, well, um, yeah, yeah, Jim. Just a praise. I mean, somebody last night asked me why I like, what, what I like about coming to church on Sunday, not all of them, but fellowship, worshiping God, but just the fellowship and the music, it's, it's such a blessing, it's a joy to come. So good. Yeah, I always think that it's really just a little bit of taste of heaven, you know, just a little taste of heaven. Um, this is kind of weird, but I'll, I'll throw it out there anyway. Um, does some, is someone having an a issue with their left foot like that needs... And, and if that's you, um, you can get prayer afterwards. You might not feel like, man, I want to stand up and have everybody stare at me or something. I don't, don't want to do that. But um, I just feel like God wants to heal you and... and um, Praise God for that. So, but I just want to try it out. Is there? I mean, I'm just crazy, you know. Whatever. But oh, back there. Okay. Lord Jesus, bless Gia. So, Lord, bless Gia, and we just pray that right now you'd begin to feel, or that you'd begin to um, heal her, and that she'll be healed right now in Jesus' name. And we say thank you, God. Thank you that you're the great physician. We give you all the glory. But just bless her, Lord, and heal her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. You're so good. We just praise God for that. And, and Lord, we continue to, to lift up Dirk's dad. And, um, Lord, that you would heal him and help him. And, and, Lord, it's a pretty serious thing that he's going through. So we just lift up him and pray that you'd bring him through. God, we pray for different people that are going through... Um, flu and thank you for bringing Lucas through but God there's a lot of people and and we just pray for your I just pray even right now father we pray together for your protection on each one of us that you'd deliver us and heal us Lord and and bring us through this season without the flu somehow God we continue to lift up our world and God we pray for 
um, for our leaders, for our president, our nation. Lord, we pray for revival in Jesus' name. We continue to pray for Israel, for peace, and for the Palestinians. God bless them too. And, but God, we are praying, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would thank you, Jesus, that you came to bring um, peace on earth and goodwill toward men, Lord. And so we just pray that you will move even among us, Lord. Help us to be peacemakers. And, and we thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful fellowship that we enjoy. It's so good, Lord. It's really um, just a sign of your blessing when there's this fellowship among us. And that's what you want, Lord. And we thank you. We praise you. We pray for, thank you for um, the ministries of Lifeline Food Pantry and Christmas for Children. And God bless those. And so all the things, Lord, we just lift up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, um, as we go into our scripture today, um, we're looking at part of the passage that um, Anna and Maggie read for us. And so in... Um, in Isaiah, okay, Isaiah chapter 8 <coughs> is where we're at today. And so the, the prophet Isaiah, you know, he, he ministered over 700 years before the birth of Christ. And he had a lot of prophecies about the coming of Jesus. And so, um, but he lived during a really challenging time. Because at, when, when Isaiah was ministering, um, so the, the descendants of Abraham, the people of Israel, you know, were, there were 12 tribes within Israel. And at this time, the time of Isaiah, um, 10 of the tribes lived in the northern part of what, what now today would be Israel. <laughs> but 10 of those tribes lived in um, the nation that they called Israel. And two of the tribes lived in a smaller nation called Judah. And, um, but both of them, you know, they were pretty small countries. And they lived at a time of real kind of fear and hopelessness. And that, one of the reasons for that was because to the north and east of them, in what today would be like Iran, Iraq area, um, were the Assyrians. And the Assyrians, their capital was Nineveh, and they were just a really powerful uh, nation, powerful empire. And they were going through, and they, their army was really strong, and they were going through, and they were just really um, dominating and, and taking over a lot of smaller kingdoms. And so... So the little nations of Israel and Judah, you know, they were afraid that the Assyrians were going to just come down and take them over too. And so there was a lot of, you know, pessimism, a lot of hopelessness, and they were, you know, just a lot of fear. And, um, but here as we look in chapter 8 of Isaiah, verse 11, this is what... Isaiah says, he says, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do, and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. He's the one you should fear. He's the one who should make you tremble. He will keep you safe. But to Israel and Judah, to the people that weren't trusting the Lord, but to Israel and Judah, he will be a stone that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. For the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble and fall, never to rise again. They will be snared and captured. Okay, so there was, so what God is saying here to Isaiah is that, you know, the things that make other people afraid and filled with fear and hopelessness, um, don't be like them. Don't be like everybody else that's so 
living in fear. And really, um, you know, as I was reading this, I was thinking, man, that's really a lot like the times that we're living in because there's just so many things that can cause fear for us. You know, we can think, well, man, what are the Chinese doing? You know, what are the Russians up to? <laughs> you know, what are, what's happening in Israel right now? You know, is this, is this, is this the end? You know, is this, um, or what's happening in our own country? You know, uh, what's happening in our economy? My goodness, you know, gee, I used to, you can't hardly go out for coffee anymore without spending 10 bucks, you know? It's like, so if you're cheap like me, you'll, you'll just stay home. But uh, anyway, it's just like, it's so crazy, you know, like what's going on. And, and we, could, we can think of things that, are, that really disturb us. And, you know, our, the, the news feeds that you read or the you turn on the TV or whatever, it's just, you know, oh, you can, after a while, you might just say, I'm taking a break on it, you know. But um, anyway, there's a lot of darkness, a lot of fear, a lot of hopelessness. But I think that what God is saying to Isaiah in his time, I think God is saying to us in our time too, that we're not to be people that live in fear. You know, we're not to be people that are, that are just freaking out and, you know, hyperventilating and um, panicking. God has given us, a, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, right? So we don't need to, we don't need to live in fear because we, we know the end of the story, right? And yeah, there's some scary things. I, I mean, you'd be not living in reality if you, if you thought that way. But, but just like the Lord said to Isaiah, um, don't think like everyone else, okay? Don't live in dread of what frightens them. We're not to have that kind of a spirit. We're to have a spirit of power, love, and self-control or a sound mind, right? So that's what the Lord wants for us. And so um, I really like what my little study note in my, in my Bible here says. It says, for the people of Judah, fear of invasion was a constant threat. They had powerful enemies on their doorstep. Yet Isaiah said, the Lord of heaven's armies, he's the one you should fear. He's the one you should fear. And by the way, when we talk about fear of the Lord, it means putting the Lord first, okay? We're putting him first above every other, every other thing that there is. He will keep you safe. Fear is a powerful enemy of our faith and a strong deterrent to the believer's peace of mind. Um, but God is our shelter and hiding place. Ask him to drive inappropriate fear from your heart and to help you fear only him. Let's put the Lord first above all things. And as we read on here, verse 16, the Lord says, preserve the teachings, preserve the teaching of God and trust his instructions to those who follow me. So God wanted Isaiah to preserve the teachings of God. He wanted him to, to keep on with the teachings of God. It's another way to put it. And to entrust his instructions to those who would follow. There are those who will not follow the Lord, but there are those who say, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and by the way, this is one of the reasons as a church that, that we are very committed to sharing um, the word of God with, with our children. And, with, and I just am so blessed with like our confirmation kids are up here reading the scripture, you know, and, and our, um, so we're, you know, we're invested in Sunday school and, and crew and youth group and everything and kids blast. You know, we, we want to pass that on. We want, we don't want the flame to go out. We received it from those that went before us. Now we have to pass it on, right? And we, we have to be faithful in that. Verse 17, I will wait for the Lord. 
who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob back then because they weren't listening to God, but I will put my, I will put my hope in him. Our hope is from the Lord, right? We don't, we don't live in fear. Our hope is with the Lord. Verse 18, I and the children, I and the children the Lord has given me serve as signs and warnings to Israel from the Lord of heaven's armies who dwells in his temple on Mount Zion. Isaiah and his children were literally a sign to the people of Israel. And if we go back just for a second to the, uh, to the first part of the chapter of, uh, or chapter 8, I'm just going to read this really quick. Verse 1, it says, The Lord said to me, Make a large signboard and clearly write this name on it, Mahar Shahal Hashbaz. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I asked Uriah the priest and Zechariah son of Jebekiah, both known as honest men, to witness my doing this. Then I slept with my wife, this is Isaiah saying this, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And the Lord said, call him Mahar Shahal Hashbaz, for before the child is old enough to say, Papa or Mama, the king of Assyria, will carry away both the abundance of Damascus and the riches of Samaria. Okay, that's, that's kind of, kind of a in, crazy thing, but um, Isaiah named his son, his child, for this event that was coming. The Assyrians were a threat, okay? They were actually going to come, and they would take Damascus, they would take Samaria, which was the capital of Israel, the northern tribes, it was going to happen, right? So the fear was, so I just told you, don't be afraid. And now Isaiah is saying, well, it's actually going to happen, but still don't be afraid. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, the Russians are coming, okay? I'm not saying the Chinese are coming. I don't know that. That is above my pay grade, okay? I don't know. I, I can't tell you that. But <laughs> So maybe I shouldn't have read that because I don't know how that relates to anything. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'm just saying that, that in, in spite of the fact that there was real, honest, real things, freaky things happening, the Lord still told Isaiah, don't be afraid, right? Still don't be afraid. Yeah, it's going to happen. Isaiah's like, yeah, I know that's going to happen. But I'm still not to be afraid because I'm fearing the Lord. I'm putting him first, and he is sovereign above all things. It's not like God didn't know. <laughs> Do you think God didn't know the Assyrians were coming? In fact, he did know. He told them that they were. But he still says, don't be afraid. And, and so, um, so one of the signs of Isaiah and his children are that they're not to live in fear. They're not to be afraid. They, they have a different spirit because they fear the Lord. They don't fear the events that they're hearing about on their phone, which they didn't have back then, of course. But um, so, verse 19, someone may say to you, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead with their whisperings and mutterings. They will tell us what to do. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Should the living seek guidance from the dead? So in Isaiah's time, people were so desperate, so filled with hopelessness and fear that they were going to mediums and psychic people to try to get truth and understanding. But like, um, you know, should the living seek guidance from the dead? Even if it were the dead people that you're talking to, why would they know anyway? But by the way, it's not your dead relative that they're talking to, okay? You, they're familiar spirits. So when a medium is contacting these spirits, they're contacting demons, okay? And they're not going to tell you anything that's true. They're going to tell you garbage. And that's why the Bible tells us not to mess with that stuff, okay? It's real, I mean, there's a spiritual reality, but um, just as, as in Isaiah's time, 
we still, there's still people like this today that try to mess with the occult and so forth. It's nothing but trouble, and it will always lead to, um, to hardship. When my, um, my grandfather died long ago, my grandmother, um, these women came, these two ladies came to her and they said, hey, we have a message from your husband that, that he wants to communicate with you. And thankfully, my grandmother was a very godly woman and she said, no, not doing that. You know, um, we're not to listen to, to that type of thing. So, so don't, don't mess with those things. The Bible's really clear on it. And um, yeah, I don't need to say anything more. Don't get your palm read. Don't read the horoscope trying to figure out what your future is. Who cares what your sign is? Doesn't matter because that's not your destiny. Our destiny is with the one who is above all that. Amen? And he doesn't need to, to talk to dead people. He doesn't need to ha ha get his Ouija board out <laughs> and tell you what's going to happen, okay? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And that stuff is based on fear. But that's not, the wor that's not where we're at. We live in the light not in the darkness. And in verse 20, it says, look to God's instructions and teachings. People who consult his word are, com people who contradict his word are completely in the dark. They will go from one place to another, weary and hungry. And because they are hungry, they will rage and curse their king and their God. They'll blame God for it whatever bad happens to them. They'll look up to heaven and down to the earth, but wherever they look, they'll be, there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. They'll be thrown out into the darkness. Those people that reject the Lord are in the darkness. But chapter 9, this is great. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Praise the Lord that Isaiah... God helped him to see far into the future. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali, that was what would later be called Galilee, um, will be humbled. Yes, they'll be humbled. Yeah, the Assyrians are going to come there. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. Okay, there's going to come a, a better time. This is a a hard time, a dark time, but there's going to come a better time when that land will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. So what's he talking about? The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. It's, gonna, it's coming. The people who live in the land of deep, deep darkness, for, the, for those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Okay, so what is Isaiah seeing? He's seeing the, the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. And he's looking forward to his coming. He's seeing ahead 700 years. And it says, you will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. There's going to be great joy. And like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms blood-stained by war will be burned. They'll be fuel for the fire. So there's going to come a better day. And um, so again, what's he talking about? Well, he's, uh, he's talking about when Jesus would minister. Guess where Jesus spent most of his ministry? in Galilee, in that dark place. And in fact, maybe you can remember in um, the Gospel of John when Philip, the disciple, um, he wanted to introduce his friend Nathaniel to Jesus. And Philip said, 
hey, Nathaniel, we have found the Messiah. We found the Christ. And, and his name is Jesus of Nazareth. Remember, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth, which was in Galilee. And, and Nathaniel said, can anything good come from Nazareth? You know, it's just dark up there. It's, it's really the spiritual wasteland. Can anything good come from there? And Philip said, come and see for yourself. And he introduced Nathaniel to Jesus. And Nathaniel became one of the disciples of Christ. In that land of darkness, Jesus would minister. There would be thousands that would come and hear the good news. There would be those that would be healed from blindness and deafness. The lame would walk. The demonic oppressed people would get delivered. There, there'd be um, people even raised from the dead. There'd be amazing things that were going to happen. A, a light would come. And, you know, um, we live now. Isaiah lived 700 years before that would happen. And Jesus would come just as he foresaw. And Jesus would come and he would fulfill his purpose on earth. And his purpose was really to come and die, which sounds like a pretty, you know, it's like, wow, his purpose was to come and die. It was. It was to come and go to the cross and die in our place and take upon his own body the punishment that, that should have been ours. Well, why are, what is it? What do you mean the punishment that should have been ours? Well, you know what? We have all sinned against a holy, sinless God, our creator, the one who made us. And the living God made us to have relationship with him. But because of sin, our relationship with the Father has been broken. And that's why people are, are like, man, God, I don't even know if I believe in God. What do you mean, God? I don't feel God. I don't see him, you know. But he's there. And, and he loves us. That's the good news. But because of sin, we're separated from God. And we're on our way to uh, eternity away from him in hell. So that's the bad news. But the good news is that for God so loved the world, he loved us so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came, and he came and allowed his body to be broken for us. And he allowed his blood to be shed for us. He died in our place. And to all who receive him, to all who say, Lord, I'm a sinner, I need your forgiveness, I need your grace, he will say, I've come and I've paid the price for you. All you need to do is receive. If you receive me, to all who received him, he gave the right to become children of God. So um, we'll do just a couple things before we take communion. First of all, I'd like us to, um, if we could say the Apostles' Creed together today. And, um, and so we're just going to stand and, and say this as a statement of our faith Let's read this together. And that this is what we believe as Christians. And by the way, anyone who, who is a, a Christian is able to really say this. Um, so let's say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. So God came to give us life, to give us hope. And as we come to Holy Communion today, we come and celebrate the life and hope and new life that he's given to us. I always, I always see communion as a time to kind of reset our relationship with God. And so we're just going to take a moment of silent prayer. And I just invite you to close your eyes right where you're at and, and just silently in your heart. Um, we're going to just take a second to, to confess our sins to the Lord. And maybe there's some things that you've been struggling with that you, um, you just need to ask the Lord to forgive you, even right now. So let's just take a moment and do that as we prepare for Holy Communion. Heavenly Father, we confess our sins to you. We thank you, Lord, that you have promised us that if we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, none of us is perfect, but we thank you that you're the one who's perfect, that you're the spotless Lamb of God, and you took our sins with you on the cross you paid for them and you rose again and you conquered sin and death and we thank you god for your grace your forgiveness we receive that today lord even as we receive holy communion thank you father in jesus name amen amen so we're going to ask our servers to come on up here and <coughs> and so there's um yeah. Oh, we got to do the bread first. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So we'll go. We'll go ahead and serve, and we'll just ask you to hold on to it, and then we'll we'll take it together once everybody's been served. If you're if you're here today and you say. Man, I don't know if I'm really ready for this. That's okay. You don't have to take this. And, um, you know, we're not here to, to, to uh, be watching people that way. But um, anyone is welcome to receive Holy Communion. All we ask is that you've received Jesus or are receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior even right now. Thank you.
let's drink this together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for again taking our sins upon yourself, for shedding your blood, and for the cleansing that we have, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. All right. Well, let's, let's worship the Lord together and just ask everyone to stand if you'd like to. Who could have imagined it? Infant and the infinite. Son of God so wonderful. Heaven's perfect miracle. Glory in the high. you that if anybody would like prayer for anything, there are a couple of prayer stations. One is out this door here, and then the other one is down the hall, way down that way. So receive some prayer if you'd like, and um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you
peace. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen.